Howdy folks, okay, another day, another adventure. All right, thanks for tuning in to Black Acre Ranch. I'm Jeff, and uh, I'm here with the pigs. Now, we have a bison ranch, and we have 32 bison, well, 31, and uh, a number of babies. What's up, boyfriend? Boyfriend or girlfriend, not sure, actually, to be honest with you. Um, little piggies, but we also have pigs, and so I don't want to leave here and thinking, we never give you updates on these things, so look how big they are. I think they're right around 15 and a half weeks. And these dudes are getting some size to them. We got them when they were seven and a half weeks old in the beginning of May. So obviously they've grown a little bit and uh, they're cute. I kind of think they're like little dogs, man. They just plop down, their little floppy ears. So, you know, I can't not tell you about how the pigs are doing, okay? So, I'm not doing bison right now. This is a pig pig video. And some of the things I wanna to talk to you about are how big their pasture is, a little bit about their pasture placement, um, some little things that we've gotta do with it, um, how we set it up, and some do's and don'ts or things I regret about how we set it up. So, that's what I wanna share with you guys today. What's up, little dudes? Or dudettes? Okay, this is their shelter. Let's start off with that. Shelter-wise, they have a goal post. This is a soccer goal post that we just uh, found on the property. Threw some tarps up. It is not pretty, but it is shade, it's effective, and the pigs hang out under here and they root around. And like all little piggies, they just follow me. Aren't you guys cutesies? Anyway, they follow me, they're rooting around. Um, like I said, this tarp's seen better days. It's a piece of HUD. It was cheap, whatever. But this was just to give them some shade during the days and let them kind of relax someplace. We have them on 0.4 acres. Um, and it's generally a rectangle. Outside the fence over here is another 0.2 acre spot between some sidewalks and then another 0.4. So it's all symmetric about the center section here. So this is a 0.4 section. Um, as you can see, there's tons of grass. Like everywhere, there's grass. Um, these are red wattle pigs. They do forage. They have the little dangling thingies next to their mouth. Um, you can kind of see it on this guy back here. If little piggy would get out of the way. You can see it just kind of dangling right back there. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that's for. I don't think anybody really does. But these guys are good meat. They have a very nice flavor to them. Um, they grow fairly well and they do well on forage. So when I look at my pasture, I think uh, they suck at forage because they have so much grass. So maybe I'm feeding them too much, I don't know. But these guys just seem to have a lot to eat, but they don't eat it. So anyway, this is our shelter, it's good. Now we placed our food in here. This is just one of those typical feeders, hog feeders, opens at the top and it comes down at the bottom and they use their nose, they get in there. They're actually probably empty right now because they haven't filled it up yet. Um, they were going through about two, three bags a week. Um, this aluminum guy, it, my thoughts are, it kind of sucks, it's kind of cheap, but it works. Um, the leg down at the bottom right hand side is kind of bent. You know, it does its job, but um, the part that I don't like really about what we have set up is that it's over here. Okay, so whenever we bring in food, we've got to carry it from all the way to that gate, and I've got to park on that slab. So it just makes it more tedious. You might ask yourself, why would we do that? Why do we put a gate in the far corner to then put the food in the middle and then have to go ahead and drag it and carry it all the way in here? Well, the reason we did that was because we're stupid, okay? When we did this, we didn't think about that. I have the gate up top because I would think that that's where I'm gonna be unloading pigs and loading pigs. So I can back the trailer up over there um, and get all that taken care of when they get to slaughter weight. Now, the first time we had pigs last spring, um, it ended in disaster, all the pigs died. Go back and watch it. You'll see in my videos, I don't know if it was 30 or 40 something, um, pig attack, that kind of thing. So anyway, enough said, we've got these guys, but I was gonna put them over in that corner. 
and uh, put them in the trailer, in other words. That's where I was going to bait them in, back the trailer up and do that. Don't put your food in the middle of your pasture. you got to carry it all, man. It's just, it's dumb. We're going to live with it this time. We are going to live with it this time. But in the future, we're not going to do that. Let's get these guys a little treat. Some watermelon. All right, let them in there. If you are wondering, yes, these pigs will be for sale for some meat. I don't know technically how many have been claimed yet. We have a slaughter date in September, but uh, we will be selling meat. So we are gonna be doing this long-term. We are gonna have some pigs. Um, the goal is to have a little bit more and more every year. We only have four this year. That's all we could get our hands on. Um, but we will breed, hopefully in the future, maybe some, but that's only if we're living here. Until then, we'll just get feeder pigs, and once we have enough demand from family, friends, and then outside that for sure, we'll make that decision and kind of keep expanding it. But we do enjoy our little piggies. <laughs> and they like watermelon. <laughs> Now, some of you might be wondering how big they are. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. You know, they have ways that they've said that you can measure these things. Um, we're not around the pigs enough that I can go up to them and pet them and other things. They'll come up to my feet. They will sniff it. They will try and bite my feet. They'll do different things like that. But I, I can't go up to them and just cuddle them and call them George, okay? It's not going to happen. So I haven't measured them. I haven't weighed them. Um, so it's kind of one of those things, it's like pregnancy, right? You go to the birth and you find the gender out there. We're gonna take them to slaughter, we'll find out their weights, um, and then calculate a bunch of things. So I don't know their weights as they're getting older, but you know, I'm fine with that. Let's just find out when we get there and go from there. In case you're wondering, this is what we're feeding them. It's a hog grower, uh, pardon the shadow. 15% crude protein, 3% fat, um, complete feed, minerals and all that other stuff. And it's for all stages. So it's from Dumore, I think that's what they call it, hog grower. So this stuff is $3 cheaper than the uh, other stuff at Tractor Supply. And the pigs love this stuff, holy cow. I'm gonna give them a third bag, but this is the stuff that we're using. Uh, it's a little cheaper, but they really, really like it. So we've been using it. All right, these guys think they're dying, man. They're not. You're pasture pigs. Go eat some grass. All right, but you can see. <laughs> you can see, man, when they want food, they want food. So, yeah, you talk it, girlfriend. You talk it. All right, little piggies. Piggies, piggies, baby. All right. They want to get some food. Let me show you kind of what happens in, in here. So you get a lot of this messed up junk in the bottom. And so I need to clean that out every once in a while. So I'm going to clean that out. And because these guys are like, man, chomping at the bit, girlfriend. I'm going to clean that out real quick and get back to you guys on food. All right, I tried splitting up some feed for them. They seem to be liking that a lot better. They're not fighting over it as much. <clears throat> but um, one of these things should be able to do, I think, four to six pigs. They're a little hungry, but they're little piggies. That's what they do. Isn't that right, little guy, huh? All right, let's feed up the rest of it. This thing will hold 150 pounds, so three bags full. And we're going to have to put another one. We do have a second one of these. We're going to have to put it out here. Um, but I would really like to move this guy. The thing is, with it being aluminum and the setting sun and everything, I don't want to get in so hot and being out in the direct light. And that's why we put it here as opposed to just out there, um, trying to keep it protected some. Um, we're going to have to revisit that 
either this time or definitely before the next time. So if I do remember right, we have two boys and one, or two boys, two girls, I believe they are. The boys have been castrated. Um, I'm walking over the water, excuse me. But I think they're all growing pretty nicely, boys and girls. I can't tell them apart, to be honest with you. I'm not that good yet. But uh, yeah, we love our little piggies. Now, I talked to you about the food. The food is in the wrong spot. Well, guess what also is in the wrong spot? The water. Okay, so we have some 55 gallon drums. You guys are familiar with these nipples that are on the end. We've been doing that. They do have some water left over here. Now, I have not filled this because I'm gonna try and remedy the problem. For one, we only have one of these guys, okay? The second problem is, is you'll see what they're doing to this. They are digging out and getting underneath it. And that generally happens because, as you can tell, it's leaking. Okay, so when it's leaking, it's gonna start keeping the ground underneath moist. And as it's moist, they wanna burrow in it, they wanna do a mud pile, they wanna just kinda of do all sorts of things into it. So, um, what happens is it starts to tip it. Now, this is the repair to go ahead and stand it back up because they have tipped it at one point. Um, this is the problem when we have water with these nipples. Now, I'm not a super fan of these nipples, I just am not. Can't seem to get them to really seal. It always seems to leak a little bit here and there. And this is a problem that it gets caused. And they go around. So these pigs will dig. Our first time doing this, we had the pigs in, in here and we had the water here in the corner. And you can see the remnants of exactly what they did to that. They started digging. And this one was leaking a little bit more. And so they just ended up digging out along this line, along that line. And we had to start putting wood there to block it. Um, again, it's because it leaks and, you know, we don't have any mud piles or, or mud spots. I don't water them with, mud, you know, for mud purposes. I don't spray water in here. So it's only when the rain comes, but if we put water up against the fence and they start digging, they end up digging up underneath the fence. That's only going to lead to a pig being, you know, gone, right? You don't want your pig to escape. You don't want other animals to come in and eat your pigs. Um, now that they're as big as they are, I'm not too worried about that portion of it, but that's why we moved it from this corner and we put it over here. So here's my problem with where this is at. We fill these things up with water from those tanks and the hose barely reaches. So when they put it out here, um, for one, we can barely get our water to it. Two, the issue is you can't be outside the pen and even know how full the water is okay so that's not a good thing you want to have your water and your food somewhat accessible for at least visible portion reachable to fill up from the outside of your pen um, but as you can see you don't want to get it right up against the fence so my job right now is before i fill up the water let's move this guy over closer to the pen the fence line so that way we can start seeing it and uh get an idea of how full it really is. the water in the hole that way they can go ahead and have a, a mud pit that's what I'd call it anyway I moved the water tank closer the 55 gallon drum closer to the fence 
Steve was so nice. I come over here to fill it up and what we have to do is walk over to the tank and then walk all the way around or drive to that gate to walk all the way back to get the hose. And when we turn it off, we gotta go back. Well, Steve was nice. He put a little nozzle on the end so you can just turn on and off. Little stuff like that that makes Steve such a great guy, but also, you know, I guess I could have done that. I just didn't think about it. So anyway, all right, so we have a 55 gallon drum and I'm filling it up with water. I would like more water than that. We have a drum that's sitting there with the top off right next to it and uh, that one was leaking. So what I'm gonna do is, I think it was because the hole was drilled badly when we did it originally. So I'm gonna swap over to this guy and um, see if I can get him done and then have two, meaning 150 gallons pretty much. So let's see if we can get this done. This is how this one was showing up. The seal had completely just popped off around it. You wonder why it was leaking? I'm not gonna reuse this, but this is the stuff that happens that I've been finding on these guys and I don't like it. One thing that I did forget to mention was this has a closed top and I can't put my hand in there. So I'm gonna use the Sawzall and I'm gonna cut a hole in the top. good enough. I'm 6'3", and this isn't working. The rubber seal's on. I think we've got it going. I'm going to try and see if this works. Start filling it up with water. <clears throat> Looking at this fitting here, I hope you can see it. I know I'm close. It doesn't look like it's leaking. So, it does have water coming out of it. Try and clean that up a little bit. Looks like it's working. We're gonna leave this here. We'll check it over time. But so far it looks pretty good. And we just have two nipples, which is fine for four pigs and 100 gallons. So I think we're doing good on this. Appreciate you joining along with us. We're gonna cut it off here. Um, we do like our little piggies. They bring us a lot of, wow, where are they? Can't... We do love our little piggies, though we will eat them. So. Anyway, um, this is the pig update. Learn from us. We hope it's been useful for you. Um, just things to kind of summarize. 
it's better if you can put your food and your water in easy accessible locations from outside the pen. We didn't. So that's why we moved it closer. Two, um, don't put your gate, this guy over here, <laughs> don't put your gate over here so far away from your ex normal point of entry. We usually enter from the pavilion and this is way not in the same spot. So that was kind of dumb too. But anyway, this is the last year for this piggy shelter and everything, so we're gonna move them somewhere else. So anyway, guys, we appreciate you joining along. We're grateful that you're there. Um, our subscribership is kind of increasing. We appreciate that, we really do. If you haven't thought of subscribing, if you'd give it a, a quick thought, hit that subscribe button. Um, there are a lot more things to come on this little ranch. So we've got tons of buildings to redo. Um, hay barns, all sorts of stuff, animals. We still haven't gotten all the animals that we want to have. Those are upcoming. Uh, chickens, highland coos. Anyway, so you're at the beginning, the ground stages as we're learning about all this and getting it done. So first generation farm, never ranched before. So that's what YouTube's for, right? You learn about everything and you can do it yourself. So anyway, pound the like button, hit the subscribe, and uh, share it with your friends. We'd really appreciate it. Um, with that said, I'm gonna sign off. Talk to you later. Bye. With you, I wanna stay with you.